Just fantastic, really, really an amazing structure. In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded, releasing 400 times more radiation than the Hiroshima bomb. It was the world's worst nuclear disaster. 30 workers died. 50,000 people fled the nearest city. And radioactive fallout turned an area larger than Lancashire into a no-go zone. 30 years on, as scientists investigate the true impact of the disaster... It's given wildlife an opportunity to move back in, for their numbers to increase. The shell of the nuclear reactor is collapsing. Engineers must battle to stop another escape of deadly radiation. It's extremely dangerous. Everything we touch, everything we do, is completely crazy. Fighting freezing weather and lethal radiation. This is the inside story of the race to build Chernobyl's mega tomb. clean up and make safe one of the most deadly places on earth the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine if you spend too long in some parts of this building the radiation will kill you don't stop don't stop We're in the control room of Reactor 4, where, just over 30 years ago, they conducted a safety test on the 26th of April, 1986, and it went catastrophically wrong, and as the consequences we're all too familiar with. At 1.23 in the morning, inside this Soviet-built reactor, a runaway nuclear reaction created a massive steam explosion. The blast killed two workers and blew radioactive uranium fuel onto nearby buildings. Radiation coming from this and the destroyed reactor killed a further 28 people. Soviet authorities have been trying to downplay the incident, claiming that there are only two dead and only 150... The reports coming out of the Soviet Union, we do know that a zone of deadly radiation is being released from... The, the explosion sent 50 tons of nuclear fuel high into the atmosphere. The wind blew it across Europe. Where it settled, it contaminated both the land and animals. In the UK, sheep reared in parts of Wales and Cumbria were declared unfit for human consumption. Close to the reactor, the radioactive fallout forced a third of a million people to evacuate their homes, never to return. It was and remains the world's worst ever nuclear disaster. After the dust settled, the Soviet authorities faced a monumental problem. Over 200 tons of radioactive material remained inside the damaged reactor building. Left unchecked, wind would blow the radioactive dust into the air.
Over the next six months, workers battled extreme radiation. To seal the reactor inside a 300,000 ton shelter made from steel and concrete. It was called the sarcophagus. Once it was complete, the world breathed a sigh of relief. Everything seemed safe. But the engineers who built the sarcophagus knew it was a temporary fix. Today, 30 years after it was built, the shelter is falling apart. This equipment monitors the stability of the existing shelter, which is absolutely essential to ensure that we know precisely what's going on here. We know that it's way beyond its design life. It's crumbling. We've already had a collapse on one part of the turbine hall about two and a half years ago with a very heavy snow load, and see some very, very major structural damage there. holes in the roof are clearly visible. The collapse of the shelter itself over the old reactor hall is the apocalyptic scenario which we must avoid. Certainly it would uh, release another major release of radiation into the environment. The sarcophagus is a toxic time bomb. Don't stop, Dermot. Three hundred meters away from the reactor, where radiation levels are low enough for builders to work normally, they will construct two halves of a giant steel arch, taller than Big Ben. They will mount them on two concrete runways, running either side of the crumbling sarcophagus. Then they will slide the two halves of the arch together to make one enormous structure. Inside the ceiling of the arch, they will attach two giant robotic cranes. Next to the reactor, they will construct a nerve center to provide the power, ventilation and control systems for the arch. Once complete, engineers will slide the vast arch over the reactor. It will be the biggest structure ever moved across land. Over time, the remotely controlled robot cranes inside the arch will dismantle the old sarcophagus and remove the remains of the exploded reactor, making the site safe. It's a trailblazing scheme that will cost more than 1.2 billion pounds. It will be funded with grants from countries all over the world. We're not really a, a normal bank. We have over 40 international donors supporting our work, representing the fact that it was an international uh, accident and it's an international solution to that problem.
Since 2010, up to 1,200 people have traveled in to work at the Chernobyl site each day. The ambitious project has attracted an international team of engineers. When you have the choice between building a tunnel in, uh, in Miami or, uh, or an arch in, uh, in Chernobyl, uh, it seems strange to, go, to choose to go to, uh, <laughs> to Chernobyl. It's a complicated project because it's difficult to understand each other. It's hard to find somebody who hasn't heard of Chernobyl. You know, my kids, uh, when they talk about what their dad does, you know, like, oh yeah, that's that's a pretty special project. I had a very nice agency call me and they asked if I was interested in Chernobyl. And I laughed and I said, you're having a joke with me. But uh, after a few conversations, I realized they were being serious. And I thought, this is a challenge. The first stage of the operation is to construct the arch in two halves. The frame will be made from 25,000 tons of steel tubes, whilst the vast roof will be clad with stainless steel. Ukraine's harsh climate will make building the arch a formidable challenge. The biggest problem we have is the weather. It's the biggest, biggest problem on here. Um, for the winter period, we can lose three months, four months of the year. Winter temperatures here can plunge to minus 29 Celsius. Today we have the wind problem. Uh, yesterday we had ice on the roof, so we could not work. We lost a whole morning yesterday just through the ice on the roof alone. Ian's team must work 109 meters above the ground. That's twice the height of Nelson's column. For this job, it's extremely dangerous. The winds, the rains, makes the surfaces that we're working on very slippy. The roofers are all trained rope access technicians. But in these conditions, a momentary lapse of concentration could be fatal. And some of the materials that we're using, they, they, they can act like a kite, if you like. You can imagine a sail in the air, and the, the material is razor sharp, so it's, it's very, very dangerous. Um, so yes, we have to be very, very careful. The extreme weather and heights aren't the only risks that the team must battle. Radiation is still streaming from the melted uranium fuel in the destroyed reactor. The uranium fuel gives off radiation in the form of gamma rays, high energy photons. Some of these pass through the walls and stream out into the surrounding space. Most pass straight through a human body, but some interact damaging cells and fragmenting DNA, which can cause cancer. The dangers are very real. Back in 1986, when the Chernobyl reactor exploded, the blast blew open the pressure vessel holding the uranium fuel. This exposed workers and firefighters to high levels of radiation. Engineer Nikolai Pazhentsov was on duty in the reactor as the disaster unfolded. <laughs> Последствия этой, этого разлива сказываются по сей день на ногах постоянно язвы и возникают кожа слазит. Radiation burns skin 
and can prevent cells in the body dividing normally. В то время никто об этом не думал. В первую очередь нужно было все выполняли свои прямые обязанности. In the weeks following the disaster, 28 workers died from their exposure to radiation. Every year, on the anniversary of the disaster, the people of Slavutich, the town where most Chernobyl workers now live, remember those who lost their lives. Viktor Ivkin was also working at the reactor that night. Like many others, he received a large dose of radiation. К этому моменту я сам уже два раза сходил. То есть это уже, если работный рефлекс у человека появляется, это уже где-то больше старинки. Today, at the Chernobyl plant, the danger of radiation still exists. Ninety-five percent of the uranium that was in the reactor before the explosion is still there. Close to the reactor, the high number of gamma rays makes it too dangerous to work for the long periods of time needed to construct the arch. But the engineers have one thing on their side. As the gamma rays leave the reactor, they get further apart from each other. And some are absorbed in the air. So for every 1,000 gamma rays passing through a person standing 30 meters from the radioactive source, only about one will pass through a worker standing 300 meters away, where they're building the arch. Radiological engineer Nicola Gilcher measures the radiation across the site. You can see uh, here the reactor number four, which was damaged in uh, 86. And uh, at about 200 meters from the reactor, the platform uh, where the arch will be uh, built. So you can understand that if you are going further from the reactor, the dose rates are uh, lower. A special unit checks the daily amount of radiation every worker receives. We provide everybody with dosimeters. I have the French national dosimeter. I have the Ukrainian national dosimeter. And then we also have an electronic dosimeter that is our operational dosimeter. The dosimeters ensure no worker receives too much radiation. There's one further challenge that makes this already complex project even tougher. Time. The crumbling reactor to their side could collapse at any moment. In June 1986, two months after the disaster, Soviet engineers began building the sarcophagus to enclose the ruined reactor. The plan required 300,000 cubic meters of concrete to buttress the damaged walls and giant steel beams to support the roof. But the extreme radiation made it impossible to build the sarcophagus to normal engineering standards. We had no time. It was necessary to install the sarcophagus without 
welding without bolts because all sarcophagus we had no uh, welding so on weight that's all the sarcophagus had no proper foundations it simply rested on the ruins of the destroyed reactor even as they built it engineers knew its days were numbered he had no clear vision clear understanding about condition of the former structure foundation was destroyed so when we completed sarcophagus we have made decision that uh, real time for life of sarcophagus should be no than 30 years now the 30 years are up if the roof of the sarcophagus collapses it will throw radioactive dust out into the atmosphere where the wind could blow it towards the construction site. If a worker inhales a radioactive fragment, it could stay in the body, releasing radiation that could cause cancer. Good morning all. So this is a jacking and lifting, so I will ask you to not stay under the load if you don't need to be under the load. So this is a heavy lift. The team building the arch is in a race against time to complete the job before the sarcophagus collapses. Okay, as soon as you are ready, Michel, you tell me. Huh? All right, as soon as you are Deputy ready. construction manager Jean-Philippe Gardeur and the team are gearing up to lift the second half of the arch to its full height. Everything on this field is huge, it's enormous, you know. We, we don't have small things. Everything we touch, everything we do is, uh, is completely crazy. Nice to hear this noise, huh? It will take 40 huge jacks to raise this metal monster. That's going to be very tight. <laughs> That's for sure, but we'll see. Okay, we go Each jack has enough power to lift five jumbo jets. Okay, guys, so we start uh, jacking now. Okay. Well, good start, so we have to try to, to reach uh, the target of... Uh, finishing the, 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 the jacking today. Quickly! 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 Seven, eight. Yes. Five. Millimeter. Okay, let's continue. Can't move, is it? Okay, perfect. Okay. Yay! success but the team can't afford to kick back and relax if the sarcophagus collapses before the arch is in place the fallout would contaminate both the arch and work site it would undo the years of work it took to clear up the radioactive debris from the original disaster It's a nightmare scenario, and the people here know better than anyone what the effects would be. Тем не менее, мы его помним чистым, красивым, ярким. High levels of radioactive debris fell on this city. It will be uninhabitable for hundreds of years. Autumn 2014.
Jean-Philippe must now join the two halves of the arch together before winter sets in. Okay, so uh, we will start the scaling now. It will take 56 pairs of hydraulic pistons and over a megawatt of power to pull the arch together. Such a system develops a huge force, that's crazy. So uh, we, we are right, we can say it, yeah. The two parts of the arch are finally one. It's a major moment. For the first time, it's possible to see the vast scale of the new shelter. Right now, it may look like nothing more than an empty hangar. But before they slide the shelter over the reactor, engineers will transform it into a living, breathing machine designed to tackle Chernobyl's long-term problems. The radioactive debris inside the reactor will remain dangerous for at least 20,000 years. If engineers simply covered the reactor with the arch and did nothing else, they would only be adding to the problem. In time, many years from now, the arch would collapse. And a future generation would need to build another, even bigger one, to keep the reactor safe. To stop this happening, engineers must fit out the arch with trailblazing equipment designed to clear up the destroyed reactor. Nicolas Kai is in charge of constructing the new shelter. And we have to provide tools to enable the deconstruction. We have to remove the sarcophagus built by the Russians. So first of all, it's to remove the roof over the exploded uh, reactor. And then after, they will have to break the concrete and at the end, remove the fuel in the heart of the reactor. It will take a long time. Our arch is warranty for 100 years. So uh, at the maximum, <laughs> I mean, uh, at the maximum, they, they can take 100 years. No one has attempted to dismantle an exploded nuclear reactor before. Radiation makes the job too dangerous for people. The fuel that was there is still there. But when they start to dismantle it, you're going to expose that fuel. And as it gets exposed, the level of radiation will get much, much higher than it is today. Rob Owen leads the team building a special robotic crane that will dismantle the reactor from inside the shelter. It uses an ingenious system of wires to carry a platform holding a robotic arm. The arrangement of the wires is crucial. If the platform was supported by vertical wires, it would swing. But using three pairs of wires arranged in triangles and adding a heavy weight makes it rigid. It's not perfect. A strong side force could move the platform and slacken some of the wires. But if the weight on the platform is heavy enough, all the wires will stay tight and the platform will remain rigid enough to hold the robot arm that will dismantle the sarcophagus. We kind of had to really go back and, and study the design. Would it work here? Could we make it big enough? It had to be considerably larger than anything that had ever been built. But the idea was really intriguing because of all the pluses. To drill into walls or pull a beam, the robotic arm needs to be able to push and pull horizontally. We have the six wire ropes and a lot of weight here, as you can see on the, on the bottom. 
all the cables remain in tension. It provides that stiffness that allows you to do pushing, pulling. This quarter scale model demonstrates that the concept works. But the only place large enough to test the full size crane will be in the arch itself. Summer 2015. In less than 16 months, the team must slide the arch over the reactor. But there's yet another major job they must complete before that deadline. Right next to the reactor, they must build the nerve center that will house the control systems for the arch, and where trucks will collect the broken down pieces of the old reactor. It will be the entrance into the arch, so the truck can enter below the arch, and all the uh, waste or the deconstructed uh, material uh, will go through that building, out of that building, to be stored uh, somewhere else. The real challenge is the location. It's just 10, 20 meters from the uh, exploded reactor. This area is so close to the reactor that builders must wear extra protection and working hours are limited. It's too dangerous for people to work inside the crane cabs above the reactor. So operators drive them by remote control from the safety of concrete sentry boxes. I don't think 30 years ago there was a word in construction for safety. It's increased by tenfold, a hundredfold. Safety is much more important than it was before. Back in 1986, the priority was to clean up the disaster. And people paid a heavy price. After Chernobyl exploded, it burned for nine days spewing radioactive dust onto the surrounding countryside. The Soviet authorities declared a 30-kilometer radius exclusion zone around the reactor. They drafted in 350,000 people to clean up the radiation. They were called liquidators. At the center of the zone, they cleared the radioactive debris from the roof of the exploded reactor. Here, some only had 45 seconds to perform their task before their dose of radiation became too great. In the surrounding area, they washed down surfaces to remove the radioactive dust. They bulldozed and buried the most contaminated homes. Along with over a million tons of contaminated soil and machinery. Among the liquidators was Ivan Martinenko. First thing we did was to move to the PUSO. Помывочного пункта для автомобилей, для людей вот это начали строить. Но в армии сказали так, наберете 10 БР и будете уволены. Но это был обман, это был обман. Работали, не, не отпустили, сказали, не, не кем подменить просто. В район проведения специальной обработки населенного пункта по маршруту. The World Health Organization estimates that around 2,200 liquidators have died, or will die, as a result of the radiation they received. Those guys are heroes. They did tremendous work. It could have spread and been much, much worse. Today, the cleanup isn't finished. 
It will take decades for the remote control cranes to dismantle the damaged reactor and dispose of its radioactive waste. This creates another major design challenge for the engineers building the arch. It must last 100 years. The metallic structure cannot last 100 years. You have to protect the structure and repaint it. I mean, uh, as a French, I take the example of the Eiffel Tower, which is uh, repainted every uh, seven to 10 years. Moisture in the air will cause the steel to rust over time. Painting the steel protects it, but it will be impossible to repaint the steelwork once the arch sits over the reactor. As you can see, the steel structure has been painted uh, in the factory. Uh, this paint will last 15 years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we will not be able to renew it once the arch will be in uh, final position uh, because the, the, the radiation condition at that location uh, are too severe for uh, a painter. But left unpainted, the arch will corrode. To solve this problem, they're engineering the arch to be an ingenious breathing structure. The gap between the arch's exterior roof and interior ceiling will be airtight. This creates a vast enclosed space around the steelwork. Powerful fans will suck in air from outside, channel it through massive dehumidifiers to remove moisture, then blow the dried air along three and a half kilometers of aluminium ducts into every corner of the enclosed space. The ducts will constantly recirculate the dry air to make sure that the atmosphere in the enclosure remains dry so the steelwork doesn't rust. For the ventilation to work, the interior ceiling must be airtight. We have some junctions here, so because of this gap, we have to do a compressed sealant, which makes the air seal tight. This cladding, it's stainless steel, and it's designed for the purpose of containing any airborne contaminated particles um, from escaping into the environment during the dismantling of the reactor number four. Spring 2016. The four engineers slide the arch over the reactor. They must install the massive cranes 80 meters above the ground. Baptiste Brivois is the engineer in charge. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Today, he has a 26-story climb to the control room. Three hundred sixty-nine. Three hundred sixty-nine. So twice a day. <laughs> Everyone in position. Everything's ready. We can start. We can go. We can start. Okay. The team is relying on twelve hydraulic jacks fixed near the top of the arch to lift the eight hundred ton crane into position. Inside the jacks, hydraulic jaws grip the wires attached to the crane and slowly hoist them up. It's coming closer and closer. I like it. But just as the crane lifts off, they hit a glitch. Glitch. 
Sorry, sorry. Uh, no, apparently we have a little problem with the strain carousel. The lifting wires are tangling. Okay. Down. I'll be there back in a minute. Working 90 meters above the ground, it's a precarious operation wrestling the wires back into place. It was very weak, they are very efficient, so we can still finish today. <laughs> Now, engineers can start tests on the full-scale crane. Now we can lift. Yes, we can lift, yes. Within the next few years, these cranes will start dismantling the ruins of the Chernobyl reactor. It will be the final step in the long operation to make the site safe. Scientists make regular visits into the exclusion zone to study the effects of the radioactive contamination. Ecologist Mike Wood is investigating what types of animals live in the zone and if the levels of radiation affect where they live. At the time of the accident, depending on which direction the wind was blowing, and whether or not there was rainfall, you got different amounts of radioactive fallout in different parts of the exclusion zone. Mike is setting up camera traps in three different areas, places with high, medium and low radioactive contamination. The traps will photograph any large mammal that moves in front of the lens. We're hoping to be able to understand more about the way in which the range of large mammal species that we see is or is not influenced by the radiation levels. By placing traps at 84 randomly chosen sites in each area, Mike hopes to discover how many different species of large mammals live in each place. So when we put the cameras out, we take a, a GPS reading of the location of the camera and then we can use handheld GPS like this to be able to find the cameras again and then come and see what it's recorded. So let's have a look at this. cameras reveal an astonishing variety of life. So we can see that we've got an elk here and a wild boar as well. We see quite a range of animals on most of the cameras that we bring back in. Red deer, wolves, lynx, Eurasian lynx and also European bison as well. in the high contamination areas and in the low contamination areas, there doesn't seem to be a difference in the range of species that we see. 
it appears that some animals are thriving in the exclusion zone. But the animals might not have it all to themselves for long. In the once abandoned town of Chernobyl, nine miles from the reactor, radiation levels are low enough that some workers constructing the shelter stay here for up to two weeks at a time. And a Chinese company plans to take advantage of the cheap land to install 25 square kilometers of solar panels to once again generate electricity in the zone. November 2016. There are only 11 days to go before the team moves the arch. We're coming to the end. We're preparing for the skidding of the arch over the reactor. At last, this huge thing is built and it's going to move to where it should be. For the engineers, this is the last chance to make sure everything works. There's a lot more activity because we now have many more tasks to complete, all in the same period. One job is crucial before they slide the arch. They must open its enormous special doors. remaining gap with a flexible plastic membrane. Just as the team gets set to raise the heaviest panel, a winter blizzard strikes, threatening to shut down the operation. Icy temperatures could freeze the machinery. We have six tilting panels, and the largest one is 320 tons. At the location where they would be located, it is not possible to send uh, a person to uh, close this tilting panel, to operate them. So we have designed a system of hydraulic jacks, a system of winches to close this panel remotely. It takes four hours to winch the massive cat flap open. Seven years after work began to build the 36,000 ton shelter, the day finally arrives when the team will attempt to slide it over the reactor. It will be the largest structure ever moved across land. Uh, we are almost at the end. <laughs> yes, we are under pressure. It's a great challenge because of the size. I'm also thinking about myself. I have already a lot of uh, white hair, and uh, uh, sooner it will be finished, better it will be for me. When you come here, you look at the distance between the reactor and the arch, and you're thinking, well, this is going to be a couple of days' work. Moving this massive structure will be no simple task.
These will slide on Teflon pads placed on top of the rails. The typical example of a Teflon pad with the two holes in it. Over these knocks we put the Teflon pad, right solid. And basically, if you put a lot of them, you make your own sliding way for the skid shoes to slide on. This non-stick surface, also used on frying pans, will help the stainless steel feet of the arch to slide with very little friction. To push the arch, engineers will fit each leg with hydraulic pistons. These move a pair of wedges that grip the steel rail. Powerful pumps will then extend the pistons to push the arch forward. More than 200 pistons must work in perfect unison to slowly slide the arch towards the reactor. This is a one-off skidding. I mean, you can't, you can't go back. So you, you, you should be sure that you have not forgotten anything. This is the critical maneuver everyone has been working towards for seven years. That's the confirmation that we're ready. The pistons fire up. 2,000 tons of force pushes against the arch. And they're off. The vast structure as heavy as three and a half Eiffel Towers, slides towards the reactor at around 10 meters an hour. It's crucial that both sides of the arch move at the same speed. If you move one side faster than the other, you will get bending in the arch, which can lead to uh, damage of the arch. And if we go too far from each other, then you see the deviation between the two gets too high, and then we have to adjust. In the screen, all the upper skid shoes are the north. These are the south. So then we can select the upper skid shoes and move forward to correct the readings we get on the, the system. For the south, 383. Okay. okay, thank you. Who is that? Ben. That's the difficult part. You get so much data and you have to act correctly and quickly. Okay, go. Okay, I'm going to the system. People will follow the sliding itself of the arch. 80, 90 people will be involved. We have a lot of watchmen because our clearance is very limited. The clearance that we have is quite tight. It's uh, 50 centimeters. What could go wrong during the skidding? Nothing. <laughs> Everything should be fine. But just as the arch approaches the reactor, they run into trouble. It gets caught on a barbed wire fence. The radiation here is high, 
so they must act fast. There is two river, we, we are touching the arch. So we are sending uh, somebody with a saw to remove these river, to be sure that we are not damaging the arch. With the wire removed, there's one last task before the final push. Yes. They must lower one of the panels, or it could jam on an old chimney. If the arch is too close to the end, it will hit the uh, chimney. So we have to tilt it before, and then we can restart till the end and finish it uh, tonight. Oh, Vitaly! Yes! Go! Go! go. Over time, the remotely controlled robot cranes inside the arch will dismantle the old sarcophagus and remove the remains of the exploded reactor, making the site safe. It's a trailblazing scheme that will cost more than 1.2 billion pounds. It will be funded with grants from countries all over the world. We're not really a normal bank. We have over 40 international donors supporting our work, representing the fact that it was an international uh, accident and it's an international solution to that problem. Since 2010, up to 1,200 people have travelled in to work at the Chernobyl site each day. The ambitious project has attracted an international team of engineers. When you have the choice between building a tunnel in, uh, in Miami or, uh, or an arch in, uh, in Chernobyl, uh, it seems strange to go to choose to go to uh, <laughs> to Chernobyl. It's a complicated project because it's difficult to understand each other. It's hard to find somebody who hasn't heard of Chernobyl. You know, my kids uh, when they talk about what their dad does, you know, they're like, oh yeah, that's that's a pretty special project. I had a very nice agency call me and they asked if I was interested in Chernobyl. And I laughed and I said, you're having a joke with me. But uh, after a few conversations, I realized they were being serious. And I thought, this is a challenge. The first stage of the operation is to construct the arch in two halves. The frame will be made from holes in the roof are clearly visible. The collapse of the shelter itself over the old reactor hall is the apocalyptic scenario which we must avoid. Certainly it would uh, release another major release of radiation into the environment. The sarcophagus is a toxic time bomb. Don't stop, Dermot. Three hundred meters away from the reactor, where radiation levels are low enough for builders to work normally, they will construct two halves of a giant steel arch, taller than Big Ben. They will mount them on two concrete runways, 
running either side of the crumbling sarcophagus. Then they will slide the two halves of the arch together to make one enormous structure. Inside the ceiling of the arch, they will attach two giant robotic cranes. Next to the reactor, they will construct a nerve center to provide the power, ventilation and control systems for the arch. Once complete, engineers will slide the vast arch over the reactor. It will be the biggest structure ever moved across land. Just fantastic, really, really an amazing structure. In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded, releasing 400 times more radiation than the Hiroshima bomb. It was the world's worst nuclear disaster. 30 workers died. 50,000 people fled the nearest city. And radioactive fallout turned an area larger than Lancashire into a no-go zone. 30 years on, as scientists investigate the true impact of the disaster... It's given wildlife an opportunity to move back in, for their numbers to increase. The shell of the nuclear reactor is collapsing. Engineers must battle to stop another escape of deadly radiation. It's extremely dangerous. Everything we touch, everything we do, is completely crazy. Fighting freezing weather and lethal radiation. This is the inside story of the race to build Chernobyl's mega tomb. will clean up and make safe one of the most deadly places on Earth. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. If you spend too long in some parts of this building, the radiation will kill you. Don't stop, don't stop. room of reactor 4 where just over 30 years ago they conducted a safety test on the 26th of April 1986 and it went catastrophically wrong and as the consequences we're all too familiar with. At 1.23 in the morning inside this Soviet built reactor a runaway nuclear reaction created a massive steam explosion. The blast killed two workers and blew radioactive uranium fuel onto nearby buildings. Radiation coming from this and the destroyed reactor killed a further 28 people. Soviet authorities have been trying to downplay the incident, claiming that there are only two dead and only 150... Reports coming out of the Soviet Union, we do know that a zone of deadly radiation is being released from... The, the explosion sent 50 tons of nuclear fuel high into the atmosphere. The wind blew it across Europe. Where it settled, it contaminated both the land and animals. In the UK, sheep reared in parts of Wales and Cumbria were declared unfit for human consumption. Внимание, внимание. Внимание, внимание. 
close to the reactor, the radioactive fallout forced a third of a million people to evacuate their homes, never to return. It was, and remains, the world's worst ever nuclear disaster. After the dust settled, the Soviet authorities faced a monumental problem. Over 200 tons of radioactive material remained inside the damaged reactor building. Left unchecked, wind would blow the radioactive dust into the air. Over the next six months, workers battled extreme radiation to seal the reactor inside a 300,000 ton shelter made from steel and concrete. It was called the sarcophagus. Once it was complete, the world breathed a sigh of relief. Everything seemed safe. But the engineers who built the sarcophagus knew it was a temporary fix. Today, 30 years after it was built, the shelter is falling apart. This equipment monitors the stability of the existing shelter, which is absolutely essential to ensure that we know precisely what's going on here. We know that it's way beyond its design life. It's crumbling. We've already had a collapse from one part of the turbine hall about two and a half years ago with a very heavy snow load, and see some very, very major structural damage there. 